Hey guys, it's Paul, combat veteran, MMA fighter, YouTuber, and we are checking out one of the most controversial videos that I've seen in the past month or so, and it is comparing military recruitment ads for China, Russia, and the United States. So I'm going to be taking a look at them, but really I am going to be breaking down what each country wants in their recruits, not based on the ads necessarily, but based on the geopolitical situation that they and their militaries are trying to address. Let's get into it. So first up here is China. I, I, I may actually have to uh, mess with the music a little bit because I think it's copyrighted. Lish 国家的领导人和军队的领导人和军队的领导人和军队的领导人和军队的领导人和军队的领导人和军队的领导人和军队的领导人和军队的领导人和军队的领导人和军队的领导人和军队的领导人和军队的领导人和军队的领导人和军队
among the most high-tech, highly trained, and best funded in the world. And that's the kind of soft power diplomacy that the U.S. is able to use its large military to do. It also, we support our allies, uh, the example being like the French in Mali. Their operations were very much supported by U.S. aircraft and uh, other U.S. capabilities. These are all ambitions that China has. The problem that you run into, as you've seen there, is that conscripts that serve a period of, let's say, two years, they will be able to learn a certain set of skills, but the more complicated military skills, the ones that really make a military at its most effective, are actually pretty hard to cultivate in conscripts, right? Operating, let's say, uh, you know, a fighter pilot is a perfect example. You know, you could maybe train a fighter pilot in two years, but you would, they would barely be finished their training before they would have to leave their period of mandatory service. And of course, I imagine their officers and officers probably have a longer commitment. But, you know, what about a flight deck crew chief? Again, in two years, you could learn the basics of the job, but you need another decade before you can become proficient enough to, say, run a carrier's flight deck. And so what China is relying on here is an appeal to patriotism. They want their already patriotic people who are already going to perform some level of military service. They want them to stay longer. They want them to view the military as prestigious. They want to associate the, those soldiers uh, with China's rising military power and might. But ultimately, what they really need is just people to stay in their military or sign up for jobs that are more technical and more challenging than regular conscript period of service that most of them do. And it's especially hard when you have a very competitive global economy. Right? There may also be a secondary audience, and that is the general public, the general Chinese public, right? Because they're also going to see these ads, you know, the individuals who are too old, who've completed their military service, who have families and can't uh, abruptly change careers. They also are going to watch this ad, and what they are seeing is the messaging that the Chinese military is prestigious, they are capable, they have a wide variety of high-tech military forces, so I think that's the really what that what that commercial is for. It's for it's to get people to stay longer, to view the military as a prestigious career, and to communicate to the general public that the Chinese military is powerful and prestigious and effective. And you noticed Xi Jinping was displayed very prominently. They want to know that it is also well led. Okay, let's take a look at Russia. Это первый день твоей новой жизни. То, что было вчера, не имеет значения. То, кем ты был прежде, уже никого не волнует. Теперь важно то, кем ты будешь сегодня. Что ты знаешь о себе? На что ты способен? Вопросы могут остаться без ответов, но разве ты сможешь потом спокойно спать? Узнать себя, познать границы своих возможностей. К черту границы. Ты готов ломать себя до изнеможения. Каждый день здесь боль закаляет. Шрамы, повседневность. Это ты решил себе что-то доказать. Командир здесь только для того, чтобы ты мог увидеть в нем врага. Потому что без врага нет боя, а без боя нет победы. Но на самом деле, главный враг это ты. Вчерашний ты. Твоя задача выследить врага, догнать его, превзойти, стать лучше, чем он, и вернуться назад победителем. Потому что завтра первый день твоей новой жизни. Okay, so that was the Russian commercial. As you can see, it was very straightforward. Now here's some of the details that you might have missed. This was not a commercial for the Russian military generally. It appeared to be a commercial specifically for the VDV. That's Russia's paratroopers. This, so Russia, like China, has a mandatory military service period, and it has a large number of conscripts that it can use to fight. However, Russia has a lot 
a lot of geopolitical power projection. Again, we talked about how China sort of aspires to have its prestigious military or military be viewed as a prestige top tier military. Well, Russia actually already has a lot of that credibility. So Russia's uh, state affiliated PMC called the Wagner Group actually has training missions in Syria. They train uh, military in the DRC, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. They may, I think, also have a mission in Mali. They train troops in, well, train and mostly fight in the separatist regions of Ukraine and a number of other conflicts, uh, uh, Chechnya being another example. So Russia actually does have very considerable power projection capabilities. However, they're starting to run into manpower problems. And this is from a couple of sources. One is that the unlike the U.S. military that has extremely high level benefits, especially for soldiers that deploy, and so it rarely has to cajole or drum up soldiers to go on say a training mission to help an african military the russian military because it doesn't like to be seen as being too involved in some of these issues relies on these pmc intermediaries and the issue they run into is that the pay is not very good in places like syria the leadership has been extremely poor and casualties are through the roof in fact, they're getting so bad that the uh, Wagner Group has started recruiting uh, from motorcycle gangs. Uh, anybody that did their <laughs> mandatory conscript service and has been riding a bike around Russia uh, is a candidate for the Wagner Group. And that's because none of the actual former VDV, paratroopers, former Spetsnaz, want to get anywhere near this sort of poorly led high casualty environment and there's been stories that russian troops which officially are not in ukraine but are fighting the ukrainian military along with some separatist militia that those russian troops have also taken pretty significant casualties especially from the now more organized and more experienced ukrainian forces and this all has really diminished morale. So what this commercial appears to be doing, again, their target audience is probably someone who already is going to be performing military service. They're trying to turn this bad press, right, high casualties and poor leadership, and they're trying to twist it into a narrative of toughness, of risk and danger they want you they're leaning into the problems that they're already having and so that's why i think you see this very jack dude and he's doing push-ups and he's running and he's jumping and he's shooting and it actually depicts him shooting uh, another you know masked person again we have to remember this is this the audience of this russian commercial is someone who's probably going to be performing military service in any case and they're trying to turn something really bad right a high casualty rate into something good uh, uh toughness action getting after it you know hard charging all right so let's look at the third one i know this is this is the controversial one this is the U.S. military's woke commercial. Let's go. This is the story of a soldier who operates your nation's Patriot missile defense systems. It begins in California with a little girl raised by two moms. Although I had a fairly typical childhood, took ballet, played violin, I also marched for equality. I like to think I've been defending freedom from an early age. When I was six years old, one of my moms had an accident that left her paralyzed. Doctors said she might never walk again. 
but she tapped into my family's pride to get back on her feet, eventually standing at the altar to marry my other mom. With such powerful role models, I finished high school at the top of my class and then attended UC Davis, where I joined a sorority full of other strong women. But as graduation approached, I began feeling like I'd been handed so much in life, a sorority girl stereotype. Sure, I'd spent my life around inspiring women, but what had I really achieved on my own? One of my sorority sisters was studying abroad in Italy. Another was climbing Mount Everest. I needed my own adventures, my own challenge. And after meeting with an army recruiter, I found it, a way to prove my inner strength and maybe shatter some stereotypes along the way. I'm U.S. Army Corporal Emma Malone Lord, and I answered my calling. Okay, so that was the U.S. Army's commercial. All right, let's talk about a couple. Let's talk about what we, what the U.S. Army's thinking and intent might be. Okay, first, we know that the U.S. Army doesn't rely on conscripts, so it doesn't have a pool of staff that it can pull into any of these jobs, right? Instead, it has to rely on volunteers. And problematically, the pool of volunteers is already pretty small. Because remember, the U.S. Army cannot bring you in if you are over, if, well, they'll bring you in if you're overweight, but they can't bring you in if you're obese, if you have comorbid medical conditions such as diabetes, even poor vision, asthma, certain allergies, there's actually a lot that disqualify you. Some studies I think have estimated it that about a third of uh, US adults could even be qualified to talk, talk about entering the US Army, period. Right, so already you're talking about a smaller subset. But two, the U.S. Army relies more than any other military, especially Russia and China, on very high-tech equipment. The Patriot missile batteries are very technical, and I think that's really a good uh, illustration of the sort of high level of technical expertise we have come to expect from soldiers. Right, More than any other military, the U.S. military spends a lot on each soldier and spends a lot on equipment. And so when you talk about the subset that you want, right, you need someone who, first off, you need someone who's physically qualified. Right there, you're down to 33%. We need to find people who can master those technical skills. And you notice the soldier they profiled, bachelor's degree, there's someone who you can absolutely put in front of a highly technical system like a Patriot, and she will get smart on it very fast, right? And that is what the U.S. military needs in spades. Imagine a Patriot missile battery senior NCO with a bachelor's degree from UC Davis and five years of experience, 10 years of experience. Look at, for example, Israel, right? There's a country where at different times in our history, we've sent Patriot missile batteries. We've sent Patriot missile batteries to Eastern Europe to help them as a show of goodwill and that they are valued NATO allies. So when you have someone like that, again, someone very educated, very experienced, right? You don't need them to be the Russian uh, super jacked paratrooper, right? Because that's not their role the U.S. military to maintain its size and its high level of technological sophistication, it needs to find everyone. The truth is, it doesn't matter what 35-year-old Paul thinks about two moms, etc. Uh, the fact is, they need to sell this to 19-year-olds. That's your population. So you need to sell the army as something that 19 to 24-year-olds want to be a part of. And the survey data is clear. People in that age bracket in the United States, they want they want to be part of organizations that reflect these values. And I'll tell you from my personal experience, I served with a number of women who had female partners. And you know how much it impacted their ability to do their job? Zero. Zero. Some of them were absolutely outstanding 
and the military would be a definitely worse place if they were not in it. Military is a big place and we need all, the US military needs all the help we can get because we have places like China and Russia that are competing every day trying to figure out how to circumvent the US's status as the prestige military power. Whatever else you may feel about their cool commercials, China doesn't have elections. There is one party, and that one party tells you what to think and what to feel, and they tell you what is the party approved line, and you can go along with it. And Russia is the same way. You see what happens to their leading member of their opposition. That dude is sitting in a gulag. So this is why the U.S. military needs to recruit. It needs to recruit 19-year-olds. It needs to recruit smart ones, right? And it needs, and it's got a smaller population, and it asks them to do more. So that is my rant. I hope you guys got an understanding of what these militaries are thinking when they roll out commercials, right? A commercial, again, it's more than just a marketing guy's person's dream, right? It's a reflection of the strategic objectives of those militaries. So again, be sure, hit subscribe, uh, check out the merch store. I got the link down below. And uh, yeah, d let me know in the comments if you have other stuff you want me to take a look at. And until next time, I will see you guys later.